Up until now, I've had a very technical view of what safety means. But we have to realize these vehicles are being deployed in a society made up of people. It's not all engineers. It's not all techies. And so we need to step back a minute and think about what we mean by safe. And what happens here is you ask seven people what safe means, you'll get eight or nine or ten answers of what safe means. For example, you may say, well, we're safe because we were able to buy insurance. And we've already discussed that that doesn't get you all the way to safe. It only gets you part of the way to safe. Or you might say, well, human drivers are bad, so computers will be safe. Sure, humans make mistakes. They're not as bad as you might think. We saw the numbers. But computers make mistakes, too. And safety engineering is all about making sure that we've figured out what mistakes they'll make and prevented them. If you don't put in sufficient safety engineering effort, there's a good chance that computers will be worse than people at driving. So you can't just automatically assume computers will be better. You may say, I have a safety case supported by evidence. And you can tell I'm, put, I'm putting the ones I like better down at the bottom. You know that, That's a pretty good reason to think you're safe. Uh, safety is our number one priority. Well, that's just a slogan. Uh, it might be true if you have a strong safety culture, but it might just be a slogan. Uh, we have positive risk balance if you have some data to back that up. But we've already discussed that there are things that, other than positive risk balance, you know, positive risk balance against which baseline and what are the ethical considerations. We have safe driving behavior. We know how to follow the traffic laws. We, know, we have good roadmanship. Yeah, that's great, but that's only part of safety. The other part of safety is what happens when things get weird. Do you keep your vehicle safe? That's kind of the hard part. We've tested and simulated for millions of miles. Well, it's millions instead of billions, so it only gets you so far. Again, it's good, but it's not enough. And we conform to safety standards. That's great, but you need more than that. So what really happens is, by safe, you sort of need all these things. So what I've done is I've put together a hierarchy of safety needs. For those of you who remember your freshman psychology, this is... Maslow's hierarchy repurposed into autonomous vehicle safety. So I'm calling it a hierarchy on purpose. I'm building it the same way and the meaning is kind of the same. So down at the bottom, we have basic driving functionality. If the AV cannot drive down the road without hitting something, that autonomous vehicle is going to have a problem. That's sort of the, that's sort of table stakes. Okay. But you also want defensive driving. It has to drive in a way that doesn't get it into high-risk situations in the first place to get that level of human safety that more mature human drivers are at. Now, the thing about this pyramid is you're not on any one level. As you add levels, you have to do all the ones below or you fall down to a lower level. So by the time we're done, you have to do everything here, not just one thing. You need to do hazard analysis. That's the initial building block of safety engineering figure out what can go wrong, figure out ways to mitigate the hazard. You have to do functional safety, ISO 26262, which deals with, and I'll be very loose here and say, internal faults. There are problems inside the system, and functional safety explains to you how to deal with those in a safe way. But there's also safety the intended function, and I'll be really loose here and say that has more to do with faults in the requirements and faults in the external world and faults in your sensors aren't going to be perfect. You're going to lose the occasional radar pulse coming back and things like this. You also need to do that. You also need to do system safety. There's things other than driving safety. Driving's part of it, but there's also securing the cargo and making sure the passengers are in the right position. There's a bunch of other things that have to do with the system and its context and how it interacts with other road users, post-crash response, all sorts of things. And NCUL 4600 takes that broader view and includes those on top of everything else. The social technical issues, stakeholder expectations, all those questions about what did you mean by safe, you have to answer all those questions. All those things have to be addressed. And at the top is a just culture for safety culture. Now you might ask, gee, shouldn't you be doing just culture at the beginning? And so this is not a model of how to do it. I would say you have to start with a good safety culture. This is more a model of how I see companies building up from the bottom up. First, they try and get it to drive, then they get it to drive better, and then they add safety. So this is kind of a how companies behave kind of hierarchy as opposed to an ideal. But eventually, all these things have to happen. And until you get the entire pyramid handled, you're not really ready to deploy in a safe way. Security also matters. Security has its own pyramid that sort of shows up in the middle levels there. And this talk is not about security, but don't forget security. That will have to happen as well. If you have a system that is insecure and people can corrupt the software images, that's going to lead to safety problems as well.